Hey, what's happening everyone? William Johnson here. I wanted to do something a little bit different in this video. I have a small collection of mallets and sticks and I wanted to share with you some of my collection and how I use them and a couple DIY things that I've done. Yeah, as percussionist, or as a percussionist, I have to have a collection of different sticks and cymbals that I use and mallets for when I'm recording here in the studio or other studios or playing live just to get different timbres, different sonic textures. And a lot of times I have to use my creativity and, and, and create some type of mallet. And, and I mean, it, they can get costly too, buying different mallets. So I sometimes I use uh, creativity in various different ways to create different mallets out of the same few. <laughs> and sometimes you don't have time, even if you can buy a bunch, you don't have time to order them. You need that sound in that particular time for that time or that gig. So anyways, I just wanted to share with you some of the sticks and mallets in my collection. And also, I wanted to share with you a, a couple instruments, a stick, and a, an instrument that a friend of mine, actually my neighbor, and he's an expert wood turner, Mark McLaurin, he, he made a, a couple sticks for me and we're working on some prototypes for these sticks as well as this really cool instrument that he made for me. And let me grab my stick real quick. I have a couple of these here. He, he actually made this mallet for me and I have another one that I wrapped. Uh, let me grab that too. I should have been more prepared than this. So here's uh, here's the other, here's the mallet and here's one, this was the prototype and I actually split it because the, the shaft was too thin. But anyways, I wrapped it and it, I actually liked the way it sounds. It was gonna be for a surdo drum, a samba drum. He also created this other really cool instrument I, and it was a mistake at first and I have it in my hands here. I mean, look at this. I don't remember exactly what this was supposed to be. I need to find, ask him, I can't remember. I think it was like to hold spices or something like that. He makes like pen holders and all kinds of things, bowls. He's, man, he's really, really good. So anyhow, it had a split in it and he was, as he was telling me about it, it was just sitting on the workshop, workshop table there in his workshop and he as he was talking he was just like yeah i don't know what i'm gonna do with it it just kind of split and he knocked on it and it was like what and I, my eyes just got big and the sound was beautiful so he i told him i said dude that sounds great so i grabbed it from him and uh and started messing with it and playing it and he was like okay well then i told him i said this would make a great instrument and he said well that's what it'll be then so he just he went and finished it put a handle it's got it's made out of weeping cherry beautiful i think this is actually made out of oak then he made a knocker for me out of cherry listen to that uh. it's got a bunch of different sounds but it's just beautiful cherry uh knocker here and just man look at i mean look at the the craftsmanship on this thing and it, it just looks cool Ed, and it is heavy duty like it could be a weapon <laughs> so anyways i just wanted to share uh with you some of my sticks and how that came about we're i'm gonna head over to his shop uh later on in the video we'll go over there and take a look at his lathe he's got this elaborate setup a lot of beautiful wood around his shop uh mark was a president of a wood turners association up north, uh, I'm in North Carolina, but he was further up north and he retired down here in North Carolina and he's just, he's got his amazing shop there. He knows quite a bit about wood. So, I mean, as a percussionist, it's really neat when your neighbor is a wood turner and knows a lot about wood. I mean, because as a drummer, I mean, wood, right? You know what I mean? So anyways, uh, I'm gonna show you some of my collection and then we'll head on over to Mark's shop. So here are a few of the mallets and sticks that I like to use that I probably use on a regular, starting right off the bat with this fuzzy mallet. I've been calling it my fuzzy mallet. This was actually something that I did not long ago just to get a certain sound on a certain day. It was an experiment, a certain sound on a certain day. It was an experiment during a service, a worship a church service, and I was playing auxiliary percussion. I'm not a big fan of the 
terms auxiliary, but you get it. I wasn't the the I wasn't playing the drum set. I was playing a percussion. But anyhow, I was going for a certain sound, and I thought it looked cool too. But I was curious what it would sound like, so I basically just covered a uh, regular mallet. It's just a felt felt mallet, cymbal mallet, felt cymbal mallet, and I covered it with this faux fur, faux fur that I got from Hobby Lobby. Just some material that I cut up and then just used duct tape. Man, I carry duct tape with me. Some of you probably do as well, but I carry it with me in my toolbox. Almost everywhere I go, I probably have a roll of duct tape, like a, a blast from the past with the MacGyver days, right? So anyhow, I like the way it sounds. I've got a drum right off camera. You might be able to see it in the frame. Um, I'll make sure that you can see it as well, but you can tell there's a little bit of a darker sound you can hear. Now, if I were to use just a straight up uh, regular mallet, let's see if I have a, where? Anyways, my mallet bag is somewhere in the house, my stick bag with all my other sticks. I don't feel like going to grab it, so I should have grabbed it before I started rolling the video. But anyways, if I were to just play here and flip it around, and just play the edge of the mallet. You can tell, you hear the difference there. Very dark. Now this is already a muted drum. It's got the fur on the goat skin, the hair, goat skin. So I got a furry mallet on a hairy goat skin. But you hear some of the attack, almost all of the attack is taken away with this. And I like that sound, very dark right very dark and muted a dry dark deep tone and then i have these other mallets i love using uh, i did a video about these a couple years ago these are massimo mallets and massimo mallets is out of illinois great company ran by an incredible percussionist named choppy we call him choppy uh, massimo and these mallets are really neat they're made out of hemp and I have been using them now for the last seven or eight years regularly. These are my go-to. They are suspended symbol and they have a rattan uh, handle and very flexible, but harder. Now, I love that focus sound, but you can see the difference already. So, you know, I mean, you could go and buy as many mallets as you want for different sounds, but it's nice to experiment, right? So I love, to just experiment with different textures and the cool thing about excuse me about experimenting like this is you don't have to destroy the mallet to do it now I'm sure if I take this duct tape off it's gonna be a lot of residue but I've been loving the sound so much and the look that I just leave it on there so but anyways I love that sound you know and you know what else I love about suspended cymbal mallets like this and this handle is it's light and I love that little tick sound on the rim. So yeah, the hemp uh, part of the mallet here, man, I mean, it's barely, it, it hardly frays. And I've been using this constantly and abusing it for the last seven or eight years. But uh, anyways, I also use regular mallets, felt mallets. And then I have this guy right here. Now this is an experiment and I'm going to, uh, my neighbor is an expert wood turner and he made this mallet for me. And these were both the same mallets. And I was doing an experiment making a surdo mallet, like for a Brazilian samba drum, the surdo. And this, the shaft of it was made a little too thin. So after playing it, it ended up snapping. This was a prototype. And then I just gaffed and uh, duct taped it still but I, I i put this mallet on there but it's cherry wood by the way beautiful and we're going to go over to uh, mark mark mclaren is his name we're going to go over to his shop here in a little bit and uh see how he put this together for me because i think it's pretty neat but you can tell the sound here you got the furry mallet again and then we have the so listen so a little bit of Woom, the woom, woom. I like to think of it as a woomph sound. Woom. And then we get more of the open tone because we get a lot of the attack with the 
with the this is not as soft it's still very soft there's a like a um what did i put the the foam foam basically like you would get in a package is wrapped around the mallet and then i took fabric this yellow fabric and wrap that around and then use this pipe sealant that you can get at ace a hardware store or home depot or lowe's and then wrap that around there and that stays there and then it makes this really nice look to it but this is the core this cherry wood so you have just straight naked and then with the beater listen to that i'm hitting it with the same velocity A lot of attack, still attack, but a lot of the woomph. Nice, I love that. So you can DIY and play with the different sounds as well when you are making your mallets and that's something that I love to do. Now when I'm playing a drum like this, this is my, well, I don't know how I was going to describe it as my drum, like one of my war drums. I don't know. But I love to play it with large marching drum uh, core uh, drumsticks. So here I have some Regal Core by Collado. And these are Tim Overturfs. Very large drumsticks, right? Like cores from marching drums, marching band drum core stuff right really large drum drumstick and that's with the the head of it let's turn it around it's a little bit different more of the woomph when you play the other end of it right and i love the way that these drum core these large drumsticks uh rather sound on the rims of these drums very nice you know for the sound, different sounds that I'm going for. I'm really particular about all those different sounds with the different sticks. Now, I also love to use uh, brushes. I love to use brushes. I'm not gonna use brushes on something like this. I mean, well, you can, that's a good a different sound. You get some of the hair off of the brushes, but you know, this just for other drums or whatnot, but these are some of the most used uh, sticks, or brushes, things that I play on drums and surfaces. And these are the Black Handle uh, Vic Firth. And these particular brushes have been used so much that I wore the, the actual words off of them. But the other things that I'd really love to use are broomsticks. Now these are from Promark and they are actually made out of this stuff that you get for broomsticks. And I love the way that these sound on almost everything because I just, Love that sound. But this is an alternative that I love to use when I'm playing an acoustic set on the actual snare drum. And when they spray flat like that, you can get this really, this, this light chick, but a really fat lower sound. And I can get a lot, a lot of, uh, what am I trying to say? Not velocity, but a lot of coverage in sound and dynamics without overwhelm, uh, being overwhelming. Or really, I guess the main thing is the attack is not there as much because it's not wood, right? It's not as heavy. Um, and the surface is also larger. So the timbre is going to be different. And I love the timbre of broomsticks on the snare sometimes it's not even just about playing acoustic for me for the broomsticks as it is just getting that sound especially when you're in a big open room too i love that like a like a warehouse or a church a cathedral high ceilings i love the way those broomsticks sound now when i'm using drumsticks i use different brands um and this is a vic firth and 5a i often run straight to the 7a because I love the the more narrow shaft because I tend to play the types of music that I tend to play uh, often has more of a jazz sound to it. And I like a lot of articulation, as we say, on the cymbals and whatnot. So it just that, that you get a different artic articulation with the with the narrower shaft. But I like the way five A's feel in my hand as well. So for timbales. I, I use a couple different sticks. The sticks I use the most are actually the Alex Acuna Red 
uh, timbale sticks and I also have the purple ones and I use those if I need to get a lot more volume but recently I've been playing these Vader uh, these are the Carl Parasos these are really neat because they're a fusion and they're called the drumbale uh, so timbale sticks drumbale right so it has instead of just going straight like the shaft would on a timbale just being a straight stick with no head on there it has a taper to it so that it can be used with a dual purpose so like a drum on the snare uh, toms or whatnot so like a like a drumstick but also a timbale as well so there's no head on it so you don't have to worry about having indentations or damaging your timbales so i but i love using these vader carl parasso sticks and these are these are nice hickory balance everything feels really good in my hand but yeah these are just a few of the sticks that i like to use but man diy find you some faux firm faux firm faux fur love the way this sounds and if you have a problematic floor tom or or you're on the set you're just trying to get that sound you know carry a few different types of uh fabric shirts socks throw that in some some small stuff that fits in your toolbox some tape and then you can wrap around your mallet and you can you can tune up the drum but you can also get a different sound with your mallet you know and as a percussionist trying to add all these extra sounds to the set using that creativity will br bring a lot of mileage to the set bring a lot of mileage to your you know um virtuosity whatever I was gonna say but you can get a lot of sounds so trying all those things instead of just going out and buying another mallet you know yeah go you know there's a lot of great mallets out there to buy but try you know using your own things but anyways I just love these cherry wood mallets that Mark McLaurin my neighbor uh, created for me I mean it's gorgeous the craftsmanship it the way he finished it so smooth feels like skin smooth skin right baby smooth skin uh, and it's just great I love the the attention to detail and the actual bead of the head and the way it feels in my hand it's a little light so I don't know if I'd use it if I was in a big samba troupe but I mean for, for the type of music that I do in a contemporary setting, really love it. Uh, the only thing is that the shaft was a little bit small, but hey, that was nothing a uh, little duct tape couldn't fix. But the next, the next few are going to be a thicker shaft. So these were prototypes and beautiful prototypes at that. So I'm going to, so let's go on over to Mark's shop. He showed us around his shop and how he created this mallet for me. I thought it'd be pretty cool to take you along with that journey. My son came, brought his GoPro, and got some footage for me. I thought it was pretty neat. So we're gonna go ahead over there to Mark's shop and uh, hang out with him and his uh, amazing lathe machine and see if we can come up with some other wood instruments as well. So this is my neighbor, Mark. He is an incredible, uh, what, what would the title be? Wood Turner. Wood Turner. Okay, I'm going to be like Turner Er. All right, he's an incredible wood Turner. I'm going to show you perhaps, we'll, uh, maybe if he lets us, we'll show you some of his work. Uh, some of you uh, have seen the work already of that particular mallet I was talking about. Um, and I wanted to just kind of just get him on the channel and just ask him a few questions to just share with you. Uh, some of the things that he's doing in his shop and also how he made this uh, drum mallet a couple of them for me and then we're gonna uh, eventually work on some more of those and I kind of want to the whole idea was to make a, a samba certo like beaters for those or mallets rather but anyways I just thought it was really neat his shop is incredible uh, the wood I'm a big fan of wood any percussionist musician and craftsman alone I think are probably fans of of wood right the real deal so anyways he's got this beautiful cherry piece of wood on here and this is the same type of wood it's not the same mallet but the same type of wood that you use for the mallet mm -hmm. so first of all the machine the machine looks amazing I know it's a lathe, but exactly what does that even mean what 
because I, I imagine this would be a similar type of machine they use for drumsticks anyhow. Right, oh absolutely. So a lathe is basically a, a machine, uh, usually powered by an electric motor, or huge ones could be powered by uh, other forms of power, but basically it's just a machine that, that turns things on an axis. Okay. Um, so you can see we have a basically a horizontal axis, and um, it allows you to shape the wood with various tools. Um, we call them gouges usually. Okay. Um, and different gouges depending on the kind of turning that you're doing. Yeah. And the and the different kind of wood that you might be turning as well. Um, this particular piece is. Uh, as you said, a piece of cherry is actually exactly the same kind of cherry as the first one that is I it? turned because it was actually turned from some cherry legs that I had turned years ago and never used. So I was able to go ahead and repurpose. When you say those. cherry legs, what do you mean by that? Uh, legs that I had turned for uh, for a table that I was going to build. Oh. Um, I ended up not using the, the legs. Uh, they were kind of rough turned. Wow. Um, I had them laying around, so I went ahead and used those. But normally, if, if I was to start turning um, something like this, you'd start out with basically a piece of wood. This, this, is, this is a piece of cherry. This is a very nice piece of cherry, actually. Yeah, it is. Um, but that's how you'd start out. Okay. And then you would mount that, and you can see on the ends how I mark the center point. Right. And that would tell you where the center point would be. So if I was to mount this in the lathe, um, it would be pretty much true, and then I would start to get it round in terms of in this dimension, okay, uh, and start shaping it that way. Yeah. Four now the 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 cherry the, this particular cherry I, I get I don't know if it's the same for all of them, but it's extremely it feels extremely light and smooth in my hand. Is it is this like a more durable wood, a lighter wood, or? Well, no, I think, um, you know, all cherry is pretty much the same in okay. terms of consistency. So each wood has its own sort of density. Yeah. Um, if I was to make this out of oak, it would be a lot heavier. Right. Uh, maple would probably be about the same depending on the kind of maple that it is. Yeah. So most, you know, cherry is just a nice, uh, a nice wood. It feels good in the hand. Um, so and plus it's very pretty. Visually. Yeah, yeah. It just usually has a really nice grain. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, is this this is already stained, or is this the natural color? Um, no. What I did with this, um, I actually, uh, what I like to do is instead of just sanding with with dry sandpaper, yeah, I do what's called wet sanding. Um, so it's actually uh, some stuff I make up. It's called sanding paste. It's beeswax combined with mineral oil. Okay. And then I use. Um, a certain kind of thing. I'll actually I'll show you. What yeah, 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 right yeah. Here. Oh, okay. So that's just kind of bring out this natural shine. Yeah. Well, it, it so it sands. You can see. Yeah. It's just kind of pasty stuff. Yeah. But it's all natural. Mm -hmm. And these are what I use to sand them. So different different grits. I start out with a 180, I end up with a 600, uh -huh. which gets finer and finer. Okay. And what it does, it actually works in to the wood. And if you feel it, just feel that yeah. wood, will you? Oh my goodness. How nice that feels. That isn't, yeah. Okay. So it just, it, it starts to preserve the wood. It just has a good feel to it. Okay. And in the hand, it feels really nice. Yeah, it does. I mean, it's so smooth. It's almost like the smoothest skin. I, this is, it, yeah. It is. That's yeah. That's the first thing I noticed, of yeah. course, when I picked it up, picked up that mallet that you had for me. Yep. It's, it's, it's just, just how nice... smooth it was. Now, when yeah. I finish this, it's a, I use a little different method because you want to have something that's going to uh, not hurt the wood later with, with sweat and grind from your hands. So uh -huh. you, I do want to seal that up, um, and to do that, I use uh, I use a solution that's called shine juice. Okay. Which is basically it's um, shellac denatured alcohol with linseed oil, and I can go ahead and finish that on the lathe, so it doesn't have to dry or anything. I'll take it off and let it dry. Okay. And I actually do it while it's spinning, and I can actually, if you want, we can do that. Yeah. Now, I mean. Uh, you know, but I wanted to show you also how I do those. Yeah, yeah. That I might use. And also, like on the edges of these here, mm -hmm. this is you put these. You see these a lot on the drumsticks. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you do that? Okay, well, let me show you. 
Um, put this back here. It's like a medieval weapon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> they're, uh, they're all a little different in what they do. Yeah. Pretty so cool. with, in that case, what I would do, if we wanted to turn uh, some little lines on here, what uh -huh. I would do is sort of line up my tool rest, and then we'll have to measure those. Okay. Let's get a, a ruler here. Yeah, yeah. And um, how, how many of those little lines would you like on here? Uh, three. three. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll make them three quarters of an inch apart. How would that be? All right. Does that look good right yeah, there? Yeah, 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 yeah. You want one more maybe up there? Sure, why not? We better put one more. Yeah. make little lines here so we know where we're working. Oh, cool. That's cool. You're using a pencil. Okay. There. That looks good, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then we're going to start out. I just want to make a very slight cut. Okay. Now, normally, I would be wearing a face shield, but since this is uh, not going to be anything major. We won't do that. All right. And this is the skew I was telling you about. I'm just going to use this little point right here. Okay. Just put a very small little groove right there. And lower it down. That's actually a guitar string, huh? It's a guitar string. Wow, okay. okay. Got the G and string. Then, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to bring this up a little bit. We'll just let friction do its job. Look at that. Wow. That's cool. That's how you get those pretty lines in the drumsticks there. Look at that. Plus it smells really good. Oh, I bet, I bet. Burning wood is great. Okay. Wow, look at that. That's it. That's great, get a close up of that. That's gorgeous. Look at that. Incredible. You want to put some finish on it? Yeah, let's do that. Right. This is the product uh, that I use. You can make this yourself. I buy it commercially, um, but it's it's sort of pre-mixed. But you can make your own, uh, which I'll probably start doing uh. that way. But so basically, all we're going to do here, um, I'll go ahead and finish it, and then once it's done, I'll go ahead later and I'll I'll take it off. I'll basically you just kind of start finishing it down, and then I'll saw these off and finish the ends. But we'll go ahead and finish. Uh, most of the, the mallet, as you call them, I call yeah. them drumsticks. <laughs> so we'll get it spinning. Put some light on her here. Let's see what we're doing. This is the fun part. This is probably the, the coolest part of turning things is that you get to see the, the grain, the beauty of the wood yeah. come out right before your eyes. And it's just so fun. Wow. Oh, look at that. It looks shiny already. Yeah, so we'll just, it's called friction polish, actually is what it's really called. And what happens is that as you spin it, it creates friction, and it sort of burns off the, the denatured alcohol that's in there, leaving sort of a nice shellac type finish. I mean, look at how shiny that is now. 
Does that like protect it from other stuff? It will. It, it's uh, it's just it'd be like shellac, uh, so it will protect against uh, just things that it would come in contact with. I don't know how good it would be if it got wet, but certainly in terms of just holding it with your hand and whatnot. See how it's shining up? Yeah. We'll put a little bit more on there. Feel how nice that is on your hand. Wow. Look at that. Wow. Nice, huh? It does feel really smooth. So there you have it. You can do it that way, but the other thing you can just use it, you know. Yeah. That's beautiful. So, Mark, you're holding in your hand something that uh, you made for me. Mm -hmm. Just recently, you just finished it yeah. not long ago. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, we had a piece, um, William and I were talking about a, a piece of the turkey oak that I had sitting here a few days ago. Um, and it had a big split in it. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. It's kind of worthless for what I'm going to use it. And William kind of hit it and said, wow, that sounds pretty good. So we started thinking about it. And he uh, we thought, wow, that, that does sound pretty good. So I went ahead and uh, put a handle on it, and I don't know what you call, would call it, but it's yeah. a pretty sound, I suppose, <laughs> if you it. so, It's a wood block, except it's not very blocky, right? No, it's not, so it hollowed out. It was splitting right down the middle. This is actually, I didn't cut this. This was a natural split right natural here. Natural split, that's really um, neat. So uh, I just drilled it. It's a beautiful out. piece of wood. What type of wood is it? This is turkey oak. Okay. And the handle is made out of, uh, it's called Weeping Cherry, uh, which is a nice smooth wood. I had a piece laying around, so I just turned the handle, um, drilled a hole in the bottom, put it in there, and we're good to go. So, um, but yeah. That's really neat. I like it. Sounds perfect. <laughs> So yeah, man, thanks for hanging out with me. I know this video is a little bit different, but I want to kind of do more things like this. And I, I do have vlogs on the channel as well. But don't forget, if you have not already to subscribe to the channel, if you like this video, if you dig it, hit the bell, hit, uh, hit the bell, hit like, and also hit the bell so you'll be notified when there's uh, future videos. And let me know if you like the vibe of this video as well. It really helps me out when I get feedback from those of you that continue to watch the channel or those of you that are, are new or whatever. I do have playlists on the channel. If you go to the channel and then you go to, there should be a tab that says playlist and you'll see different videos, music videos, productions, cajon lessons, bongo lessons conga lessons and yeah so anyways thanks for hanging out with me god bless you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and i'll see you soon